Hey guys, how y'all doing? Welcome back to Chipped or Dipped. This is Jared Bryan and uh, I'm getting you guys a message real quick. A lot of people don't know what chipped or dipped means. Chip means accepting the mark of the beast, the chip, 666. Um, at some point in time, coming up soon I believe, we are not going to be able to buy and sell without having to receive the mark, receive the chip. Um, so anyway, I'm talking about chipped or dipped. Now, dipped means getting born again and getting take dying. Your old man, the old man has passed away, and you're you're reborn with Christ. You're risen like Christ was risen. The old man is that sinful man is gone, and you're a new creation in Christ. And that's what being dipped is. So anyway, chipped or dipped. Anyway, so I just wanted to get into that real quick and let you know the title of my talk. The title of my talk is called Battle Ready or I'm thinking Born Out of War or Born Into War. I think Born Into War is probably good. Born Into War, Battle Ready. Because really, if you want to look at what's going on right now, you were born into this world. You didn't have a choice. But on the right side, you have God's kingdom operating. On the left, you have Satan's kingdom. So you're right in the middle. You're right. You got born right in the middle of the battle lines. So this is the battlefield, and you're born into it. Grasp that real quick, because that's what's going to be the base of this talk. And it, it's not my talk, it's the Holy Spirit's talk. I shouldn't have said that. Uh, I rebuked that. It's not my talk, it's the Holy Spirit's talk. Because He's the one giving me insight and vision, and He's the one who's leading me. And um, the Holy Spirit's a person. It's the it's the person, It's the it, he, he is um, um, a spirit that can reside inside of you. The same spirit that God, that Jesus had without measure while he was walking this earth, you can pray and fast and, and, and ask for the Holy Spirit to dwell upon you when you clean house, when you clean this system and you get rid of all the foul spirits and unclean spirits. You can actually have more of the Holy Spirit, um, more, more of uh, the gifts operating inside you. You know, you should be attacking and, and going after the fruits of the spirit. Because if you go out after the nine fruits of the spirit, there's not there's gifts also that are attached. You can get gifts, so you can operate and operate like with the authority and the power that Jesus Christ did. Now, if you hear another message, another another gospel besides authority and power, or people that are not teaching that you can have this power to heal, raise the dead, and 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 cast out unclean spirits, then it's a false doctrine. It's a false gospel. So, anyway, I just wanted to put that out there real quick. Now, all right, so where do, you, where do you come in? Where do you come in? Okay, so a lot of people think that Satan dwells in hell. Hell is like a, a, an area where people can be held bound and captive. Hell is not where Satan is. Satan is alive and well, and he's Roman, and he's, he goes to and fro, it says, looking who he can devour. So, um... Oh, you know what? He's looking to who he can devour. If you don't have the armor on, then you're going to be easy to get devoured. The armor. Um, you, I've already given talks about the armor of Christ. You can, you can get the armor um, real quick. Um, let's, let's go into, you know, you got the breastplate. You have um, the belt. You have your feet. You have the shield of faith. Sheed is the pre preparation of the gospel of peace. Shield of faith covers your 
their shields used to cover their whole body from all the arrows that that were attacking. So all the arrows from the enemy that are attacking, if you have that shield on, your whole body is going to be covered. And especially the main areas that protected all the main areas that, you know, would have been a fatal wound. You know, on, on my arm, if it scratched my arm, if I still have the shield up, you know, I'm still going to survive. Helmet of Salvation. This is one of the most important ones because it protects your mind. Put on the Helmet of Salvation. Um, and these are all dealing with defense. The chest, the breastplate. You know, you have, um, you know, the waist. Um, so you have everything right now that I've talked about is dealing with defense. So the Helmet of Salvation protects the mind. You know, you, you know that you have salvation and, and you have to protect your mind at all costs because that's where the enemy, that's one of the main areas where, where the enemy tries to battle you because you're fleshly man, you're born into sin. So you have to battle that flesh. You have to deny yourself. So your spirit man strengthens when your spirit man strengthens your fleshly man weakens vice versa. You strengthen your fleshly man, your spirit man weakens. That's why a lot of people aren't even in tune that there's even spirits or anything like that. So, now this one deals with going on the offensive now. The sword of the spirit. Which can, which, so if I have my sword, I, this is my sword. I have a certain amount of reach, okay? So I have a certain amount of reach with my sword, Okay? My sword is my, my mouth. Now, my, my mouth, my sword can be a lot longer, and it can attack a lot more people now that I have social media, and I can, in, I can influence people um, that way. But God has designed another thing that's even more powerful than, you know, your ability right here. I can attack... Around me, I can attack close to me. If I am confronted with a situation, I have the word. I can use the word. And I can use it, and it's my sword. And I can use it as a weapon. And I can cut down strongholds. I can cast out demonic spirits. I can cast out unclean spirits. And I, usually utilizing the sword, it can divide to soul and spirit. It, 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 goes, it penetrates deep down. So if you realize that with the sword and how powerful that is, this next thing, praying always with prayer and the spirit. So when you learn how to pray in the spirit and you learn how to be in a fasting and a prayer state and you pray, you become God's super weapon. You're like a ballistic missile system. It was God's weapon to attack multiple areas i mean i can attack something that's happened to a brother of mine in christ in russia if i want to help that brother out i can be an intercessory prayer and a prayer and fasting state and my wife and i can directly shoot prayers to help the angels that are in charge of that situation because you have angels just like a general has different setups for order god has that set up and Satan has utilized that same system, and he has like strongmen over um, like cities. Then he has like you know strongmen even bigger. Like the Prince of Persia was a super like angel or a super demon angel. I'm saying like a, a bad angel over Persia that an angel had to actually battle when Daniel was praying. He went, he, Daniel said, I want to be in a prayer and, um, and he did his Daniel fast for three weeks, 21 days. He, he was going to do this without ceasing. And the angel actually said, I heard you the first day and I came to, towards you. So when he was in that prayer and fasting state and he was in intercessory prayer, over this situation the angel heard him the first day and then he started coming towards Daniel to fulfill that situation now I'm going to talk to you about the three kingdoms real quick the three heavens because a lot of people just think there's one heaven it says real quick I'm going to go to Jen Genesis 2 1. We'll go back to Genesis just so people don't get confused, like, oh, there's only one heaven. Um, it says in Genesis 2 1, um, thus the heavens, the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. 
All the host of them. Hmm. All the host of heaven. All the host of heaven. Who could be in heaven? So you ever see those movies with all these um, false gods and you know all these people up in up in the, this heavenly realm looking thing, um, like uh, these these false gods you see in a lot of Greek mythology, like Zeus and all that. These might be um, in in those times. It could have been demonic spirits acting or or you know portraying themselves as gods or 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 um, deities like that. So if you looked at back in the times, you know there's you can see. There's a lot of like um, people worshiping them. So that if Satan doesn't dwell in hell and Satan has his own kingdom and God has his own kingdom and earth is here. Let's just look at this. So um, I don't know if you'll be able to see this or if it'll be backwards. But I wrote down some notes. I'm going to take a picture of it. It says... The third heaven. Can you see that? No. All right. I'm going to I'm going to take a picture of this for y'all. But the third heaven is where God God resides, I believe. And it says God God can even go he God he, he doesn't have to be there. He can be above the heavens, but that's where he resides. Second heaven. Just just imagine the second heaven right there. So you have the first heaven where God resides. And you have the second heaven. This this area, this is Satan's kingdom. <coughs> well, this whole area. But this is this is where they reside. Now, these these Satan's kingdom, it's basically um, if you can think of it, it's like a hostile kingdom towards God's kingdom. And it's constantly going to be in a in a blocking mode if i want to attack that hill and we need to get that ground to be able to advance um and we're in war um so i i can't i can't move forward until i i i get that hill if they have that power hill and they they have that and Jesus, uh, Jesus had a better example. He he talked about a strong man in your house. If you have a strong man in the home, you first have to bind up the strong man before you start gathering supplies or whatever. Before you can get any spoil or any goods. Like if you need a first aid kit, you would need to handle the strong man in that house before you plundered anything or took any. You need anything. You ha you wouldn't have access because that strong man would defeat you. So you got to bind up the strong man first. And you can use that with Matthew 18, 18 and 19, bind it up on earth and bound in heaven. Get two of you to re speak that together in, in prayer. Yeah, bind up, just start binding up every everything that uh, is uh, in your life that is not shouldn't be there. Just start binding up, bind it up on earth and bind it up in heaven. That's in Matthew 18, 18 and 19. But anyway, um, we're going to go over here. Second, So second heaven is a hostile kingdom that immediately tries to stop or hinder um, God's God's kingdom from helping or uh, establishing and working here on earth. So you got right underneath that that area is the sun, moon, and stars. That's the heaven. So you got the heaven, second heaven, third heaven. There could be more because it says God's going to get even destroy the heavens when he comes back and he's going to have a new heaven. So anyway, I'm just letting you know that right there, just establish that. And then you got earth underneath. So we're born into this battle, whether we like it or not. And you can choose side. There's a losing side and a winning side. But um, we can also, we don't have to wait on the next generation and pass the torch and just wait and say, oh, I failed this generation. Um, well, we're going to leave this to the next generation to start doing something. No, I'm going to bind up all the um, um, things that were on my father's and my mothers or any anyone in my generations before me i'm going to cast out all those generational curses i'm going to bind them up i cast them out over my family and and they're bind up on earth and they're bound up in heaven so now if i'm ca if, if i cast those out and i'm and i'm operating here now and i want to help out the kingdom of god my prayers over a situation I, I need to keep praying and be an intercessory prayer. That's what talks about, you know, one plants, one waters, but God provides um, everything else. So 
what you're doing when you're praying and you're in intercessory prayer, that's when you're watering. You're watering the seeds that you already spoke. So if you speak over a situation, you need to start watering that daily. You understand what I'm saying? So anyway, that's good. I'm going to go to 10. We're going to read this real quick. And then we're going to bounce, okay? In the third year of Cyrus the king, this is Daniel chapter 10, uh, king of Persia, a thing was revealed unto Daniel, whose name was called Bethshashar, and the thing was true. Bethshashar, that's just Daniel's other name. But the time appointed was long, and he understood the thing, and had understanding of the vision. In those days I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. He was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant bread. This is just his type of fast. Neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth, neither did I anoint myself at all, till three whole weeks were fulfilled. And in the four and twentieth day of the first month, as I was by the side of the great river, which is Hidekel, then I lifted up my eyes, and I looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with fine gold of upaz. His body also was like the barrel, and his face was the appearance of lightning and his eyes as lamps of fire, and his arms and his feet like in color to be polished brass, and the voice of his words like the voice of a multitude. Like when you're in a room, like if you're in a subway and you hear tons of voices all at once talking low, or in an audit, a big auditorium like a coliseum, you can hear it. It's like so there's a voice like a multitude, like it echoes a resounding voice. Mm, that's cool, the angels speaking like that. So, so a voice like the multitude. And 7 says, and, and I, Daniel, alone saw the vision. I, Daniel, alone saw the vision. Because he was in that prayer and fasting state. For the men that were with me saw not the vision, but a great quaking fell upon them, so that they fled to hide themselves. I looked up quaking. Quaking is a great trembling or like like shaking. <clears throat> it also, you know, you can earthquake also. Quaking, like that's what happens when an earthquake. Anyway, therefore I was left alone, and I saw this great vision. And there I remain, and in, in there remained no strength in me, for my comeliness, my face, my beautiness, all that, um, you know, attractiveness was turned in me into corruption, like something nice was turned into corruption. Wow. Um, and I retained no strength. Um, yet I heard the voice. I the voice of his words and when I heard the voice of his words then was I in a deep sleep on my face so when he was praying he was on his face and my face toward the ground and I just recently started doing this I haven't really been doing that before but I started praying and actually getting on the ground and you know doing that for my father and behold a hand touched me which set upon my knees and upon the palms of my hands and he said unto me, O Daniel, O man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee, and stand upright. For unto thee am I now sent. And when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. So he's still trembling. And there's a fear of God that's healthy, because the fear of God is the start of all wisdom. Any other fear is rebuked and is of Satan. Only the fear of God is acceptable, because that's the start of all wisdom. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel. For from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. The first day. So all your prayers, if you're praying and you're not doing all this stuff afterwards, are are you are your prayers um, are you helping your prayers out? Are you just putting your prayers up for an answer? You know. This, this isn't like a Hail Mary prayer. This is a direct prayer from you and the Father. If you set up, you establish that um, you're basically building a spiritual altar when you fast and pray. You build a spiritual altar right to you and God. You're basically opening up a portal. What all these people try and do with drugs and open a portal and blast off to go to the, the enemy and get insight and intel from the enemy and uh, hear all these false gods and all that. Yeah, because people do it. And uh, I'm sure a lot of people, I've, I've talked to people and they have visions and encounters and they, they actually, these deities, these things speak to them. Yeah, it's real Christians. You talk to a lot of the uh, worldly people and they know more about spirit stuff than most Christians. But that's where we're on. We're on the front lines talking to a lot of these people and trying to help them out with this stuff. Because 
you can you can uh you can get into these states and have these visions and in these counters without drugs now um anyway but say the prince of the kingdom of persia withstood me one in 20 days but lo michael one of the chief princes came to help me and i remained there with the kings of persia anyway it talks about at the end it goes on to say um that he talks about he had to fight him going i'm gonna have to fight them when i go back it says and he said to me knowest thou wherefore come unto me thee this is chapter this is 10 20 and now will i return to fight with the prince of persia and when i am gone forth lo the prince of grecia shall come that's that's the prince over greek so you had these kingdoms so the devil had established the prince of persia which is uh, basically like his archangel angel like God has archangels it was like his enemy big angel or you know strong man over that one and then over Greece over Grecia he has another one so they both were going to be sent to battle so your prayer and, and fasting and praying and intercessory prayer does more than you even realize because you're helping that angel come back and forth because every time the angels come down and forth there's a realm that they have to go through and battle so anyway i hope that helped you all because your prayer and your fasting will help if you want to um if you don't believe that there's two different kingdoms you can go over to i think matthew 12 matthew 12 verse 25 and 26 talks about it you know what let's just get the bible out i know 20 minutes long already I think I have it labeled already. Yeah, I do. Matthew 12, 25. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? So he has a kingdom. That confirms it right there. Because that's, I gave you one from the Old Testament and New Testament. So the kingdom is still operating now. Because that's New Testament and that's um, that's Paul. So anyway, um, I just wanted to let you all know that. Uh, I mean, that's Matthew. So um, I wanted to let you all know that. I'm going to come right back to where I was talking about the um, armor of God. Because if you go to the armor of God and you realize that... Where is that paper I had? You go to the armor of God and you realize that... <clears throat> um, there's certain, let's just look at the armor of God real quick. So I gave you multiple ones on defense, and I gave you the offensive ones, which is the word. And your word has a certain amount of reach and all that. And then through the prayers over your words, you create, you make that sword go even further. You turn into like a super weapon when you get into an intercessory prayer state with the Holy Spirit. Because then, just like the military has... Uh, mortars to attack certain things or we have different weapons for this is good so we have different weapons for land air and water or different climates different things like that even they even have weapons that can attack your different genome so if there's a gene structure all these people doing these DNA tests and sending their stuff out it's probably not a good idea because they're actually testing weapons to attack certain GNA or um, DNA so they can kill off a whole race. So if you have certain weapons that attack like, okay, land or water, um, God has his own certain weapons. So the word is used for one thing, but intercessory prayer is like a, a weapon that can go, has no reach. It has an unending reach, I mean. So anyway, I just want you all to get that because it's really good. And if you've never been in a prayer and fasting state, um, that's... That's the next place to go if you want to start getting in the offense. Because you're already you're you're in the battle whether you want to or not. You can kind of check out and pretend you're you, you can be away from the battle. You don't have to be on the front line. But you know what? The battle's still gonna go on. And there's still gonna be a victor and a loser. And I want you guys to be victors. And we we need help. We need more saints of God fighting in this uh in this king for this kingdom. You know, the kingdom of God. When your prayers shall be heard, because when your prayers are going towards the kingdom of God, God wants to answer those prayers. All of them. Anyway, he wants the best for you. Anyway, love you guys. Sorry it's been so long. 
It's been nice catching back up with y'all. Hopefully I'll get some more messages out to you. But until more people start sharing and sowing into our ministry, I have to do a lot of the work um, also and sow into our own ministry right now. But uh, anyway, I love you guys. And don't remember, and just remember, don't get chipped. Get dipped. All right, guys. Bye.